so in this video, um, we're going to uh, we're going to talk about latent heat, um, and in particular, this is just going to continue from what we've been doing with calorimetry, but basically adding the ability to change phase, so either um, have things melt or freeze, or to have them uh, be able to um, evaporate or you know, vaporize or condense, so basically turn from gas into steam. It's all basically the same thing. Um, I'll go over a specific uh, thing of, of something melting, but um, it, it's all basically the same. Um, so if we actually look, whoops, if we actually look at <coughs> something as it's heating up, and this is just, this is a picture from your book, and what you can see is that, um, so on the bottom here is we're, we're, we're adding um, energy, um, and then we're just looking at what happens to the temperature here. And so what you find is that when we have a little bit of ice, okay, let's say this is just a little bit of ice. If you add a little bit of ice, um, it increases in, as you add heat, it increases in temperature. And we know this, right, because this is just going to give us, this is just from M of ice, C of ice, delta T. All right, so in this case, the delta T is uh, minus 20 to zero, okay? Um, and then you notice there's this weird part where basically you keep adding energy, but it doesn't actually change temperature. Um, the reason for that is, is that uh, you're actually melting the ice here. So this is this is ice melting. And it turns out that um, the temperature of the ice won't change until all of the ice is completely melted. All right, and um, uh, there are a bunch of arguments you can basically make to to do that. Basically, the the idea is that um, if you have ice and water together. Um, it has to be at zero degrees, basically, at equilibrium. Um, and then if you add energy, you just basically melt some of the ice. If you lower the energy, uh, or sorry, take away energy, it basically creates more ice. But you don't actually have any change in temperature um, until you either have completely ice or completely water. You don't, you don't ever have change in temperature in between. All right, so that's, that's the idea between that. And <laughs> this, we, we use a really simple formula uh, for the change in energy. Um, and it's just mass times the latent heat. So this mass is the mass of, let's say, ice that's melted. Um, melted. And this is just the energy um, in, in uh, joules per kilogram, let's say, of ice melting. Okay, and so that's, that's basically the whole idea. Um, and then when you go, so after you heat all of it up and you basically turn all that ice into water, um, then you once again have water, and then as you add energy to the water, you get um, that the that the um, you know the, the change in Q or change in energy just equal to m c delta t again. Now it's water, all right, um, and this is also water, um, and the water is different. The the specific heat of water is different than the specific heat of ice. Um, and so you heat it up basically until it reaches 100 degrees Celsius, and once you reach 100 degrees Celsius again. You have to add a bunch of heat, and you're not changing the temperature at all. And that, again, is because basically you're changing water into steam, and you're adding energy, 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 until you get completely steam. All right, so it's just like um, the, the, um, uh, the example from before. Um, uh, if this is a little confusing to you, sometimes I actually find it um, easier to think about this graph actually flipped around. And this is a little awkward, but this is basically now temperature. Um, where temperature increases to the right and energy increases here. And again, what you find is that um, you basically, as you add energy, you increase temperature, you stop, and then you're still adding more energy, more energy, more energy. And then at some point after you turn everything into, into water, you then go and you basically increase the temperature again um, as you're adding energy, and you keep on going on and on. Again, that's, that's another way to think about it. Now let's go to a specific example of uh, ice um, melting uh, in a thing of um, soda. All right, so mouse, uh, my ice melting in a cup of soda. Let's go to the blackboard. Okay, so um, <coughs> so this is what we're this is the problem. We basically have a cup of soda and it has two ice cubes in it. All right, um, we're gonna make the mass of soda. Um, around 200 grams. Uh, and let's do 250 because I think that's what we said before. With the size of my um, um, so 250 grams, and then the mass of the ice uh, about 30 grams a cube. So let's just say 60 grams. And the temperature of the soda 
Um, we'll have it started at just room temperature, so we'll just take take it straight from the shelf. Okay, a hot shelf apparently. It'll be a hot day. And then the temperature of the ice is going to be minus 20 degrees Celsius. And I use that number because that's actually about how cold most of your home freezers are. Um, so what we want to find out is what is the final temperature of everything when the ice all melts and what's the temperature of the ice so to all of it together. Because again, we know it's all going to come to the same temperature. So um, <clears throat> let's look first at the three different stages of what's going to happen. Um, or the, the various stages that are going to happen. So we start out with some minus 20 ice and some 25 degrees C um, soda. Okay? So uh, then what happens with the energy? Well, we have at some point, <clears throat> let's just look at the ice right now. The ice is going to warm up. And now the the temperature of the soda will be less than less than 25 degrees C. Okay, um, it probably won't be freezing, but this is actually something that happens sometimes. Is that you actually don't know exactly what's going to happen to soda and kind of who's going to win out. Um, and we'll we'll talk about that a little bit more in class. But um, let's just say for now that the the ice heats up to zero degrees. Basically, takes all the energy from the soda, heats up to zero degrees, and that the soda is a little cooler. Um, Let's look at what happens to the ice. So this ice then is going to have um, basically the change in energy of this step. Change in, in energy of this step is just going to equal M of the ice, C of the ice, delta T of the ice. And in this case, the delta T of the ice is known because, t, uh, because you started at, um, you end at zero degrees and you start at 20 degrees. It's actually minus a negative 20. Um, and so, so it's important to know that we actually know what those temperatures are, assuming that we that the ice completely warms up. All right. So that's that step. You're then going to have a second step. All right. Now, the ice melts, and I'm going to just assume for now that all of the ice melts. Okay. So now, if all of the ice melts, you have the ice sitting at zero degrees Celsius. Again, this is just less than 25 degrees Celsius. We still don't know what that is. Um, the ice is sitting at zero degrees Celsius, but it's now water instead of ice. Okay, and that's why I've drawn it kind of squiggly. Um, here, maybe I'll draw it squigglier. Um, all right, and that, but it's still at zero degrees Celsius. Remember, the temperature doesn't change. It's just melting. Okay, and so the energy that you need for that step is just the mass of the ice, since it's all the ice that's melting, times the latent heat of the ice. Okay, and that's exactly how we do it. Latent heat basically tells us how much energy it takes to melt a certain amount of ice. And so that's going to be energy of that step. I'm still ignoring the soda. We're just looking at the ice for now. So then, the final thing we're going to do is that this ice is going to reach some time, final temperature, which is going to be the same as that final temperature of the soda. So it's all basically going to reach the same temperature at the end. And then we're done. And again, the change in energy of this, and this one gets a little weird. This is going to be the mass of the ice, because the mass of the ice is the same even when it changes, um, when it changes uh, whether it's ice or water, it's now actually water. Um, but the mass is always the same. Okay, so the mass isn't changing. But now you need the specific heat of water, because now it's actually water, all right? Um, and then the change in temperature of the water to basically to the final temperature. The initial temperature is zero, final temperature is, is whatever the final temperature is. And that's how we're basically going to solve this problem. And so during this whole time, let's just draw on the other side, what happens to the soda? So this is, this is kind of the ice side. Um, and this is this is the ice side. For the soda, we just have one big thing happen, which is that we just have the mass of the soda, C of the soda, which is we're just going to use water, turns out the T of the soda. So all that happens to the soda is that it just changes temperature. Okay, and so all of those different 
those are all the different changes in energy we have. And so if we come over here, we can just do our whole equation. Actually, let's go, um, yeah, let's go, let's stay here so we can still see everything. So the total sum changes in energy is going to be zero. If we add up all the different changes in energy, it's going to be zero. And the different changes in ener energy are the M ice, C ice, delta T ice. That's the that's the change in energy from heating up the ice. And then you add M ice L ice. Okay. And then you add M ice in the water state times C of water times the delta T of the water. And that's the end of all your um, energy changes for the um for for the the ice that's melting into water. And then we have to add, sorry, I have to go to a new line because I don't have room. Mass of the soda, um, C of the soda, delta T of the soda. And that all equals zero. Okay. Um, there's one last thing I just want to, um, to, to uh, talk about, and that's the sign of this, um, of this M ice, L ice thing. Um, you want to think about what the change in energy of the ice is. So, um, uh, whenever um, uh, let's let's look up at the temperature one. The temperature one, if it's po it's positive, whenever the final temperature is greater than the negative than the, than the initial temperature, or in other words, when it's heating up. So when it's gaining energy, you get a positive delta E. It's the same thing with the ice. As the ice goes from being frozen to melted, it's gaining energy, and so you should get a positive ML ice. If this were freezing, so this is for melting. If this were freezing, which it isn't, but if it were, you would get minus M ice, L ice. So you just switch the signs when it's going in the opposite direction, if that makes any sense. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish solving this problem. Um, we're going to, uh, um, I'm going to move this, the soda part here over to the other side of the equation. Um, and, uh, so we'll just get M ice, oh, M ice, C ice, delta T ice, plus M ice, L ice, plus M ice, C water, delta T water, and that's just going to equal minus M soda. Oops, I think I'm running out of room. Here you go. Minus M soda, C soda, delta T soda. All right, let's bring this all down so I actually have enough room to do this. Okay, so now let's start plugging in numbers. Of course, now I need to go back up here. Um, so the mass of the ice was 60 grams, we said. Um, so I'm going to do this all in kilograms because I only know the numbers in kilograms. Um, the mass of ice was 0 0.06 kilograms. Okay, the C of ice is around 2100 kilograms, uh, sorry, uh, joules, joules per kilogram degrees C. And again, for the ice, the ice just went from minus 20 degrees to zero, so it's zero minus minus 20. And that's that term. And then we add um, the mass of the ice again, 0 0.06 kilograms. And the L of ice, it turns out, is 3.3 .3 times 10 to the fifth joules per kilogram, um, which hopefully I have memorized correctly. Um, and then we're going to have, again, the mass of the ice, oops, in kilograms. times the sea of water again, because now this now this ice is turned into water, and so we need to look at basically what it takes to change the temperature of this water to the final temperature. So that's just our normal 4186 joules per kilogram degree C. I don't know if I'm remembering that number right, but it's close, anyway. And then we get the delta T of the water, and that's T final minus the initial temperature of the water, which was zero degrees Celsius. And I actually remember we've already heated up to zero degrees Celsius here. 
Um, and then that's equal to um, uh, that's equal to minus the mass of the soda, which is 250 grams, times the C of the soda, and we'll just use the C of water for soda, 4186 goes C, and then it's just the temperature final minus the temperature initial, which we said was 25 degrees C. All right, yeah, that's a lot, um, but some of it goes away because we're multiplying it by zero. So um, we can take uh, the various numbers that we have um, and work them out. Okay, so this first number is, so this, this number right here, if we bring that down, is just 2,520. Um, the first term gets multiplied by zero, so that actually is zero. And then if I just distribute this out, then we also multiply it by 20, positive 20, so we get 2,520. We then take 0 0.06 times 3.3 meter the fifth, and we get 19,800. You notice that these are all, and these are all tools. You notice that a lot more energy is used to melt the ice than it is to warm it up, um, almost 10 times as much. Um, and then uh, the the last term, uh, if we multiply by the zero, we get nothing. So we just need 0 0.06 times 4186, and that gives us plus um, 251 times temperature final is equal to. And then again, we need to multiply this one out using our normal FOIL stuff. So um, we get uh, 0.25 times 4186. And so we get minus 1047 um, times TF. And then if I do the last one, 0.25 minus 4186 times 5. And you notice here the negatives have canceled. Um, and so uh, we just get positive 26,162.5. OK, so there are all the numbers. Um, let's go ahead and group our terms of TF. So we'll bring that 1047 uh, over here. So we get 1047 um, plus 251. That gives us 1,298 times TF. And let's bring all these other terms over here. So you get um, 26,162 minus... 19,800 minus um, 2520, and that gives us 3,842. Divide that by 1298. We get that the temperature final is equal to a frosty 2.9 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's some nice, cool, uh, some nice, cool, coke by melting all of our ice in it. Of course, now it's going to be all watered down, but anyway. Um, so this just gives you some idea how to do it. Again, just like the previous stuff, it's just adding a slight amount of complexity um, by having to kind of follow the ice through all the different steps it has to go through. We could actually make it even harder if we wanted to and make it go also evaporate by making, you know, having it cool down some hot piece of metal or something like that. But the point is that this is kind of how we do it. Um, one thing to note is that we didn't necessarily know at the head of time that, that so, so the other option that could have happened is that the ice could have um, only partially melted and basically brought the temperature of the coke down to zero. Once the temperature of the coke is zero and the ice is zero, um, then no more ice will melt. They'll just stay there at that state, and you basically have some partial coke, partial ice um, thing that's at zero degrees Celsius at the end. Um, and, and we would notice it by getting a temperature final of zero degrees. Um, and so that's, that's just something to, to pay attention to if you ever get something like that. Um, that's what's happened. Okay, I hope that was useful. Um, please watch us again if you, if you need to, to kind of catch everything. Um, and you know, make sure you understand the calculations. Um, but but um, it's pretty straightforward. It shouldn't be that much different than what we've been doing. Just we're adding this extra bit of being able to melt. Uh, which turns out provides a lot of energy. Okay, I hope that was useful, um, and have a wonderful...
uh, have a wonderful day.